Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to Kids Worship. My name is Karen, and I'm here to worship with you in Edmonton, Alberta. We're at Robertson Wesley United Church, and we are getting very close to being able to worship together as children in faith, and until then, we will continue doing this. Uh, the bird that you hear in the background is my parrot. There she is. So, um... I want to begin by passing the peace. So let me start with the peace of Christ be with you and your responses and also with you. So the peace of Christ be with you. Thank you. I want to start today by singing a song that I learned when I was a child. It's called The More We Get Together, Together, Together. The more we get together, the happier we'll be. So it's pretty straightforward. I hope that you will... together 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 the more we get together the happier we'll be because your friends are my friends and my friends are your friends the more we get together the happier we'll be so we'll sing it through a couple time feel free to grab your instruments dance do whatever you want but let's sing together the more we get together And in the season of Lent, we, we hear a lot about people learning from Jesus, learning about what God wants us to do here on earth. And Jesus is a great resource for us. But along the way, there were scribes and Pharisees. These are scholars of the church and, and people who followed um, the Jewish faith. And they often got quite frustrated with Jesus because Jesus was doing things that he wasn't supposed to do. So he would eat with people that were considered unclean, people like tax collectors or prostitutes or um, anyone who was diseased, that kind of thing. And what Jesus knew and what the people at that time didn't realize is that every single person was created by God and therefore was loved and important and worthy of, of spending time with. So the song that we just sang, The More We Get Together, The Happier We'll Be, we need to remember that we are called to be with one another, that that's, that's what being faithful people is about. It's about caring for one another, treating each other with respect, spending time, um, learning about God, spending time helping other people in need. That's the point. So at one point, like I said, the scribes and Pharisees were getting frustrated with Jesus. And so Jesus decided to tell them a parable. And this parable is the parable of the prodigal son. Now, prodigal might be a weird word for many of us. Prodigal meaning it was a, a, a person who pretended like they were so rich, they could have whatever they wanted. They were throwing money all over the place um, and squandering it all just to make themselves happy and to, to look good in the eyes of others. So this particular story comes from the Gospel of Luke, um, chapter 15. I'm gonna read certain portions of this. And this is, um, this particular parable is told by Ralph Milton in Living God's Way. So it's a slightly different version than the scripture that we might read in a Bible, but it's pretty close, but it's a little more fun to read. 
Here we go. Not everyone liked Jesus. Sometimes people got very angry at Jesus for the things he did and said. Jesus shouldn't be friends with these people, they would say. We're, we are the important ones. We're the best. Jesus should only be friends with people like us. God loves everyone, said Jesus, even people who aren't always good. Listen, I'll tell you a story about how God loves those who are good. The story is also about how God loves us when we are not being good. And Jesus is a very good storyteller, so everyone was ready to listen. The story was this. Once there was a father who had two sons. The younger son said to his father, I, I just can't stand to be here anymore. If you were dead, then half of your money would be mine. That made the father very sad. But instead of getting angry at his son, he said, all right, you can have half of my money right now. Here it is. So the younger son took the money and left. He went far away from his home. The son spent his money on wild parties and expensive food. He never wrote a letter home. His father wondered if his son had died. But soon the money was all gone and the son felt very hungry, but now he had no food and no money. So he got a job looking after someone else's pigs. This is awful, he thought. Here I am looking after these stinky pigs. I hate pigs. I wish I could just go back home. The son knew he had made his father very sad. Oh, my father's never gonna let me come home, except maybe if I say I'm sorry. Maybe, maybe if I ask to be a helper or a servant, he might let me come home. So the son started walking back home. He was still a long way off when he saw his father running down the road towards him. Father, I'm so sorry. But his father wouldn't let him finish. His father threw his arms around his son and gave him a big hug and a kiss. Then the father called to everyone else. Come to our house. We're having a big party tonight. My son has come home. My son has come home. Let's have a party. Let's celebrate. They had the biggest party you ever saw. But the father noticed that the older son wasn't there. The older son had gone away, so the father went looking for him. The father found the older son in the backyard. Why aren't you at our party? The father asked. It's not fair, said the older brother. I stayed at home. I was a good child. I did all the things you asked. The other son of yours ran away and spent all your money. Then, when he came home, you had a party for him. You never had a party for me. My son, said the father, I've been able to show my love for you every single day. Your brother was lost. Now he's found. I felt as if your brother was dead. Now he's alive. Let's, let's be glad. Your brother is a part of the family again. Now, I don't know how many of you out there have a sibling, and I don't know which ones of you are the older sibling and which ones are the younger sibling. I am an older sibling, and I can identify with that older brother completely. How many times did my younger brother get special treatment? I remember the day when I, I was a good student in school and I did quite well. And I remember the day my brother struggled a little bit more, especially when it came to math. And my parents started to reward him. If he got a certain grade, if he studied, he'd get a reward. And I remember being really upset by this. I'm like, why, why am I not rewarded? I did all the hard work. I got my grades up. I'm, I'm doing well. Why does he get special, special treatment and I don't? Um, and I remember my parents telling me that, you know, life isn't always fair and that didn't really help. But really I think what they were reminding me of is that they still gave me love and encouragement and they rewarded me in different ways than they might reward my brother and so though it looked like my brother was getting more than I was honestly I think we were just both being treated the same because they would congratulate me and they always told me about how proud they were of me and so they showed their love to me um, in a lot of ways and that's that's really all that matters it wasn't about the money or the 
the treats, the food treats. It was really about being loved by one's parents. So in this story, the reason Jesus told it was because really the father in this story is like God. God loves us unconditionally. You remember in the story how when the son was coming home, he was ready to tell his dad that he had screwed up and wanted to apologize. And before he even got the words out, his father grabbed him and hugged him deeply and showed him that he loved him. And then it didn't matter what had happened. He would still be welcomed back and he belonged here. He was accepted for who he was. He was forgiven for what he did and he was loved. And that's how God loves us. There's, there's been many times in my ministry when people have come to the church and felt like they couldn't walk through the doors because they thought they'd be struck by lightning because they'd done something horrible. The church isn't just for the people who have done everything right. In fact, the church is for the people who haven't done things right, as well as the ones who have done the right thing. So that's why I want to sing this next song. And it talks about who's welcome in the house of God. And the house of God, in this case, of course, is our sanctuary or our church. Um, but we want to welcome everyone, the sinners and the saints. So the chorus is, so welcome, welcome each other, the old and the youthful, the fit and the faint. Welcome friends of each other, welcome the sinner, welcome the seeker, the sinner, the saint. I know we've sung this before, but I hope that you will join me again. you to remember that you are always welcome here it doesn't matter if you're a sinner a saint or anyone in between you belong here and you will be accepted and loved for who you are as we take this time to worship one of the things we do is we pray and so we're gonna pray to God right now and share the things that are on our hearts uh, with God together 
So find a comfortable position, take a deep breath, and let's pray. Creator God, you created each and every one of us. And each and every one of us is unique and important and blessed. Thank you for loving us unconditionally, no matter the mistakes we make, no matter when we get caught in greed or whether we're jealous, whatever it is, you will love us when we turn back to you. Help us remember that when we get off track in our life, that we can stop, repent, turn to you, ask for forgiveness, and we will always be accepted and loved. We pray this day for people in the world, people who feel lost and alone. Help them realize and come to understand that your love is awaiting them, that your love will draw them in closer, and when they come home to worship you, they will find love and acceptance. We ask that you keep our families safe in this time, and we also want to pray for the people of Ukraine and for all people who are fighting for their lives, people who face violence every day. We pray for refugees around this world who are seeking help and safety. May we all find ways to generously give back to those people who have none and nothing. May we know that we can make a difference in this world if we simply love and share what you have given us, God. This we pray in the words that Jesus taught us, our Creator who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Friends, go in peace. Know that you are loved and that I miss you and you are never alone. God is always with us. I hope to see you soon. Take care. Bye.